If you're struggling to find a consistent and resonant flute sound, then paying attention to the angles between your flute and your face can be a game changer. In this video, I'm gonna show you how, and don't worry, there's no math involved. Get it? Math? Angles? Hi, I'm Lance. I'm a professional flutist and teacher, and my goal is to inform and inspire your flute practice. In this video, we will be exploring how the angles created between your flute and your face can have profound impacts on the efficiency and resonance of your sound production. In particular, we're going to be focusing on the angles created between the flute and your lips, as well as the flute and the plane of your face. To begin, let's do a warm-up exercise to explore your range of motion with the flute. Start by using your hands to lift the flute up and away from your body and then toward your face. Be careful not to bring your face to meet the flute. Rather, let your flute meet your face where it naturally rests. For the rest of this exercise, I want you to keep contact between your lip and the lip plate. However, this contact can be very light and your lips do not have to create an embouchure. Start by pulling your arms in as close as possible while still maintaining contact with the lips and breathe. Now extend your arms as far as you can and breathe. Now find a spot in the middle to rest and breathe again. Let's now make some circles with our flutes. Notice that in order to keep a consistent contact with the lips, it's helpful to have an easy up and down range of motion in your head. Don't forget to breathe, and now let's reverse those circles. Coming to rest in the middle, let's rock our heads gently to both sides, being sure to move from the top of the spine. If the hands want to follow, don't hold them back. Coming back to center, let's make some circles with our shoulders, first moving them up and forward, and breathe. Now let's reverse the direction, and breathe. Finally, let's slowly turn the head to the left and extend our arms and breathe. Slowly let your head rotate to the right and let your arms follow and breathe. Now let's repeat that to the left and to the right. I hope your body feels a little more warmed up and energized now. I also want to point out that when holding the flute, range of motion in the head, neck, shoulders, and arms are all connected. As you're playing, make sure that one of these is not inhibiting the movement of any of the other parts. The relationship between your flute and your lips affects how the airstream is cut against the back wall of the riser. In general, the most efficient approach is to have the flute parallel to the line of the lips. This allows the airstream to hit its target with the least amount of effort from the lips. To demonstrate this, I'm going to try and blow straight forward and start as parallel as possible. I'm then going to move the angle of my flute in both directions so that you can see how this affects the sound. If this is my airstream and this is the back wall of the riser, when my angle of the flute is too low, it moves that target down, meaning that a greater proportion of my airstream is going to be shooting over the riser. This will either give me an airier sound in general, or it'll force me to push those lips down to make the air go where it needs to. By the way, if you haven't already seen my video on balancing lip, throat, and core engagement called Don't Just Relax, I'm going to put a link to that in the cards so that you can check that out after this video. If the angle of the flute is too high, you are raising the target and allowing more air to get inside the instrument. Now you might say, what's wrong with more air getting into the flute? And I'm gonna demonstrate for you what it sounds like when the entire airstream gets into the flute. 
As you can see, there's no sound. This is because sound is created when the airstream is cut against the back wall of the riser. If all the air is going in, then there's no cut. If the angle of your flute is extreme on either end, you may find that the lip plate is positioned slightly higher on one side of the lip than the other. If you're experimenting with changing the angle, be sure not to just mash up that other side, rather lift the flute away from your lips and reposition. A mirror or selfie cam can be a great tool for working on this. As you're exploring the relationship between your flute and the lips, be very careful about head tilt. For example, if your flute is generally level, but your head is tilted to the right, this is your true angle. Likewise, if your flute is generally level, but your head is tilted to the left, then this is your true angle. The relationship between your flute and the plane of your face affects how centered your airstream is on the embouchure hole, as well as the distance between your lips and the back wall of the riser. Maintaining a generally centered airstream with a moderate amount of space between the lips and riser will give you the easiest and most efficient path for a resonant and flexible tone. If you're using an extreme angle in relationship to the plane of your face, you might feel more pressure on one side of the lip than the other. In this case, work to ease pressure on that one side of the lip and maybe find a little bit more contact on the other side of the lip. I recently saw a recommendation on an online flute forum that the end of your flute comes at least to the plane of your nose. And I think that's an easy and convenient visualization. To summarize, the angles created between your flute and your lips and the plane of your face can have profound impacts on your sound as well as your ease of playing. Sometimes angles can be subtle and other times they can be extreme. Often though, it's a combination of subtle issues. For example, if the angle of your flute is maybe 25% too low and 25% too far back, this could add up to a lot less ease in playing, cumulatively speaking. At any rate, I encourage you to think about the angles your flute is making with your face as you practice. And long tones and scales are a great way to work on this concept. If you make any discoveries, make sure not to lock into place too hardly. Instead, work to maintain a good sense of ease and range of motion across your body for a resonant and free-flowing sound. Well, that's it for today, and I hope you've gotten some enjoyment and value out of this video. If so, please let me know in the comments and by giving it a like. Also, for more informational and inspirational flute content like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell as well. Thanks for watching.